after the blooming of the trees in September brings the new year for nature in Brisbane, the big storms begin to roll in in November with the promise of water and new life. Rain and rainbows mean there will be more to eat for everybody and animals begin to breed for the season ahead. The sun glows on the trees as everyone looks forward to a warm and fertile summer. The female Pacific black duck, Anna superciliosa, receives very little help from her husband in the raising of her brood. Pacific black ducks are closely related to mallards, and in New Zealand are called grey duck. They dabble in shallow water for plants and small animals. The goose-like wood duck, on the other hand, forms a monogamous, lifelong relationship in raising their young. As we move further from the creek onto the wide port field, we come upon the spur-winged plover, or masked lapwing, in our instance, the southern subspecies, who here have a tiny chick, probably a few days out of the egg. Adult lapwings have a sharp spur on the shoulder of each wing. Indigenous people said they were carrying a yellow spear. However, they used this to scare rather than to actually strike in most instances. Some weeks later, the chick has grown into a scrappy teenager while the adults employ the diversionary tactics so well known of the plover family. Look I'm nesting, look I'm hurt, and occasionally even dive bombing aggressive visitors. Before long, we're all grown up in adult plumage and ready to go out like mum and dad and start your own family. It is also the season for the hoop pine, Paruacaria cunninghamii, to put out their female cones, which will mature, turn brown and break up to scatter their tiny seeds to the wind. This was one of the most important trees in building Brisbane, and there are few of them left to see in the wild. As the mangrove flowers start to turn to seeds to float downstream, the leaves are exuding salt if you take a taste, mm, seriously salty, it really is. Very clever of nature to manage things in that way. These are the white propagules of the river mangrove. You can see the distinctive little spiral caps at the top of each fruit.
from low tree to high tree. Here we have a count of the black flying fox, Pterocarpus electro, in Kalinga Park. They're all busy keeping themselves and their young cool by flapping their wings in the hot November sunshine. These are one of the world's largest bats and are, self-evidently, pretty noisy. They don't, in fact, have any echolocation like smaller bats and find their food by sight and smell and following each other over well-chosen paths as they set out from the roof each evening. Back down in the water, in a small water treatment dam, we have a female royal spoonbill and her almost grown youngster begging for food. Their breeding crests are pretty well gone. Spoonbills sweep the water with their very sensitive bill to pick up small prey, which they can do in even murky water or at night. Far more demure, here we have a dusky moorhen, Dallanula tenebrosa, with her youngster grooming themselves on the same small dam. On one of the lower tidal reaches of the brook, we have an Australian pelican and her almost grown, if sleepy, youngster. Both pelican parents look after the egg which is incubated on their feet. The first chick will often kill or eject later arrivals and when at large colonies, for instance inland on Lake Eyre, the chicks will remain in large crèche groups until they become ready to fledge and fly. One less welcome arrival of the warmer months is the swarms of tadpoles of the cane toad, Bufo marinus which hatch from long gelatinous strings and the females can lay up to 40,000 eggs each season so it's no wonder they're such a menace. They spread upstream to mix with other animals but are toxic at every stage of their life. Tiny fingerlings of many fish species take refuge in the lower semi-tidal reaches of Kedron Brook. These could be of perch or silver biddy or even brim, and here we see them feeding on algae-covered rocks before they head out into deeper waters. As the little fish grow, they move out 
into the mangrove peg type pneumatophores, showing once again how important these tree species are for fostering young wildlife. We'll see a few water skimmers running over them then. Here we have a large school of young mullet on the open gravel just next to Shore Road, as they often are, or otherwise weed beds, because they are feeders of microscopic plants and algae and, and similar small plants. They're quite fast growing, short lived fish, and they need access to sea water to breathe. But it's quite a privilege to have them here, still right in the city. The flashing you see may be to try and scrape off parasites on the river bottom. And to finish up, the moon. We've been privileged to see some eclipses and also some blood moons and even some super moons as the moon reaches its perigree closest to the earth. That dark spot on the far left as if it's propelling the moon along is the sea of crises which may be quite relevant to nature in this current turbulent time but let's hope that it's a question of fertility and not death.